Hi, dear classmates. Welcome back to the advanced topic lecture. After introducing the defects, we now will introduce defect-based testing. In this video, we will show you VOV testing, and then in the next video, we will show you IDDQ testing. So. What are defect-based testing? Defect-based testing means that we test without specific full model. Instead, we aim to reduce DPM, defect per million. And sometimes we also want to reduce reliability defect. So why do we need defect-based testing? Because defects do not always behave like fault. So 100% fault coverage is not good enough. There are many defect-based testing techniques. In this video, we are going to show you very low voltage or VLV testing. For example, if there are some gate outside short in the circuit, the circuit may pass nominal voltage testing but it may fail at low voltage. A second popular DBT technique is IDQ testing, which measure the quiescent current. For example, if there are some high impedance bridging defect in the circuit, it can cause abnormal static current, but it passes Boolean test. These are two popular defect-based testing techniques. At the beginning of this course, we introduce the concept of test escape and the yield loss. Test escape means that those defective chips that pass the test. And the yield loss means those good chips that fail the test. So in this confusion matrix, we want to reduce the number of test escape. And at the same time, we want to reduce the number of yield loss. Unfortunately, if we perform defect-based testing, the side effect is that sometimes we may increase yield loss. So DBT is the trade-off between test escape and the yield loss. So now let's introduce very low voltage or VLV testing. The concept of low voltage testing was first proposed as early as 1982. And then it was further developed by Stanford in 1993. In VLV testing, we perform Boolean test at a low voltage, much lower than the nominal VDD which can be as low as 2 or 2.5 times the threshold voltage, according to Chang's research. We would like to say two important notes about VLV. First, in VLV, the voltage is much lower, not just a little bit lower than nominal VDD. So don't get confused about VLV with characterization tests. In characterization tests, we perform 10% lower VDD test to make sure that the chip follow our specification, which is not VLV testing. And the second note is that in VLV testing, the test voltage and test speed must be carefully characterized because the variation at low VDD is very large. If we set a very aggressive test voltage or test speed, we could result in yield loss. So in summary, VLV testing is a complement to nominal voltage testing. It's not a replacement for nominal voltage testing. We still need to perform nominal voltage testing to make sure our 
coverage is good. The idea of VLV is like this. We want to distinguish good chips and the bad chips. However, sometimes the bad chips are just a little bit weaker. If we want to detect them at nominal voltage, the difference between good chip and the defective chip is very small. It's very difficult to distinguish them. If we lower the voltage, then the difference can be magnified and it's easier for us to tell the difference. For example, this figure shows gate delay with gate outside short. As we mentioned in our previous video, suppose there is a gate outside short defect. The transistor is going to be slower. However, at nominal VDD, the difference between good and the defective transistor is not very significant. However, at lower voltage, the difference is larger so that we can tell them apart. This shows an experiment performed by Zhang 196. In this experiment, we insert a defect resistance into an MOS. This slide shows the transistor resistance are on at different voltage. At nominal voltage, the difference between good chip and the faulty chip is small. However, at lower voltage, the difference between good transistor and the defective transistor is much larger, so that we can tell them apart. According to Stanford's research, there are several defects potentially detectable by VLV testing, such as gate outside short, metal short, or weakly driven gates or VT shift, transmission gate open, also tunneling opens. According to Stanford Murphy experiment, there were totally 5.5 thousand chips tested and 116 chips fail nominal voltage boarding test. And there are 9 chips that fail the VLV testing only. They pass all the nominal VDD testing. So two of them does not have any high IDDQ. And seven of them failed VLV testing. Also, they have high IDDQ. So this is the Venn diagram of the Murphy experiment. So VLV testing looks good. However, it still have some problem. For example, number one, the nominal voltage keep dropping in advanced technologies. So there is no much room for lowering the VDD. And the second, as mentioned earlier, test voltage and test speed need to be characterized very carefully. And the third problem is that, does VLV detect any reliability defects? Based on the Murphy experiment, out of the nine VLV only chip, seven of them pass burning, and the other two fail the burning. So we would need more data to verify that if VLV is effective to screen reliability defects. Besides VLV testing, there are many other similar DBT techniques. For example, V-min testing. In V-min testing, we measure the lowest operational VDD at the specified test speed or test frequency. For example, for this picture, Shmoo plot. The y-axis 
is the VDD and the XX is the frequency. Given a specified operational frequency, we would keep dropping the voltage until a point when the chip failed the test. This is what we call V-min. On the contrary, in F-max testing, we measure the maximum operational frequency at a specified voltage. So for this voltage, we will keep increasing the frequency until a point where the chip failed the test. This is what we call F-max. These two tests are very similar to VOV testing, but they require long test time to search for V-min and F-max. Now it's time for you to work on the quiz. Which of the following is not correct? A. VOV could potentially detect defect not detectable at nominal VDD. B. DBT tries to improve DPM, not for coverage. C. VOV testing can replace traditional single stack F4 testing. Which of the following is not correct? Okay, have you got it? The answer is C. VOV testing is a complement to traditional nominal VTD testing. It cannot replace traditional testing. Okay, here is our conclusion. In this video, introduce the concept of defect-based testing. It is very useful to reduce DPM. We focus on defect behavior. We don't care much about the full model. For VLV testing, it is a Boolean testing applied at much lower VDD. It can magnify the difference between good and the weak chip. The good thing about VLV is that it can potentially detect defects that may escape nominal VDD testing. However, test voltage and test speed need to be carefully characterized. There are many other similar DVT techniques, such as V-min or F-max testing. In summary, DVT is becoming more and more important, especially for automobile electronics, where DPM is very crucial. It's the end of this talk. Thank you.